Hello, I'm Sue Rose Minahan, and this is Talk Cosmos, March 14th, the day after the new moon in Pisces, and quite an energy experiencing as we have this conjunction with the sun, the moon, not the moon, well, yes, the sun, the moon, Venus, and Neptune all collected and squaring our nodal system, a very mutable experience, which I'm sure many of us are aware of. But yet today, the moon just shifted into Aries. So it's quite a world, and our conversation today with our panel will be imagining possibilities, because we're transcending between the known and the unknown. And now that's part of Pisces in one sense, perhaps, but particularly now with this mutable experience and the connection between these really planets of magnitude. Pi Neptune has been in Pisces, the planet of forces beyond our control and the wholeness since was well, a 13 year uh, cycle and it ends in 2026. So we're in the heart of it still. So imagining possibilities fathoms vast psychic intuitiveness. It's inherent in all of us as humans. And so we're going to move between dreams and visioning. And now it's time for cosmic collaboration. Investigating the deeper archetypal questions related to understanding astrological energetic aspects for growth patterns to unify mind, body, spirit, and emotions, this is your Cosmic Collaboration Panel. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, host of Talk Cosmos, an evolutionary astrologer and consultant, plus a certified color energy coach. I explore creative expression as an artist, a musician, and write abundantly, stories to poetry. I love investigating mythology's language, philosophizing eternity, and I'm a perpetual student of life, seeing oneness of body, spirit of people, animals, and nature. I'm Susie Kerr Wright, astrologer, certified psychic medium, tarot reader, life coach, and Reiki master. I love to bring what I call cosmic common sense to the world through private sessions, as well as all types of media. My work has been published in Chewy.com, Brides Magazine, Good Housekeeping, Cosmopolitan, Elle, Bustle, and more. And I'm a regular guest on Today in Nashville. I've had my own radio shows, and I was the weekly on-air astrologer for WSCA-FM. And I love to teach astrology and psychic development. And I'm Amanda Pierce, a soul-centered astrologer, astrological consultant, and empowerment-based meditation teacher. I have a BA in psychology, I'm a wellness enthusiast with a passion for healthy eating, and I enjoy creating new realities and shifting old paradigms. And like the Sufi poet Rumi says, you are the entire ocean in a drop. Well, here we are. And as many might notice, it is a new world we're moving into. We have Susie Care Wright from Tennessee with us, and Nashville, Tennessee, along with Amanda Pierce and myself, as as is noticed, and Amanda, Shannon, who has been with us, Shannon Hayes, has obligations that are taking her away from Sundays. And who knows, maybe one day we'll change and she'll be back, so it will be a foursome. But right now we're powering ahead, and you've noticed both Susie and Amanda have been on many other shows with us. So if you go to Talk Cosmos, you can find out about each one. So today we're talking about uh, possibilities, impossibilities. We're talking about shifting through the drops of chaos into directions that go forward. And that's how I'm going to start my little synop, my little tag for how we're what is meaningful in this conversation so Susie what would you want to share well just kind of along the same lines really it you know I, I, I I'm fascinated with this um, the the mutable ch exchange that we're having now you know with um, going from this very heavy Capricornian you know overthrow 
kind of energy, you know, digging deep and, and mucking around in the, in the depths to air. You know, like we're going into air and it's light and it's breezy and there's so many other things that, that are going on. And, and so right now this, we're, you know, we're in that, in that middle part where, you know, where we, the old ways don't work anymore, but the new ways haven't really been, you know, consciously or unconsciously, uh, subconsciously uh, ingrained in us yet. So we, you know, we know we're going, we, we keep going, but we just don't know what that's going to look like and you know how to how to feel our way into it so it's just all about feeling right now in this period of time that, that is so water such as pisces <laughs> and the experience yes and amanda how would you like to kick off this conversation well in looking at the current energies what we are in today i'd love to talk about the um principle of yang follows yin and this is because venus is in such a lovely exalted placement in pisces and so there's a lot of uh ability for um creativity artistry going inward becoming more yin and allowing that um allowing yourself to go deeply yin now which will allow the yang principle of mars to more easily find connections and want what you want to birth in the coming spring. Ooh, that, thank you, Amanda. Now, both, all of this really is, uh, um, if I could just think of the words sometimes, uh, I'm thinking of this big pot, right? And the, the um, at any rate, it's, it's burbling in there. It's, it's percolating because- Percolating, that's a good word. We, yeah, percolating, yeah. okay. Because we really are, maybe we can expand. Let's expand with this yin yang. That's a good arrow to go forward as we're, um, the moon yeah. is in Aries, yeah. Yeah, well, there's, um, in traditional Chinese medicine, there's a book on, meridians that talks about how disease starts in the yin meridian channels and uh you must address those deficiency in the yin channels before the yang channels can be addressed and when you do address the yin channels the yang channels just tend to naturally follow suit and they naturally tend to balance themselves out and so this kind of really reflects that principle that yang follows yin and that everything starts from within ourselves and then it manifests forward and out and externally. So it's kind of like the law of attraction, really. Mm. And, yeah. yeah. And, did, go, did, yeah, go yeah ahead. you had more to say, I can hear it. I, I, I had some thoughts, but go ahead, yes. No, go ahead, because I, oh, okay. I want to think about where, where I want to go with that. Very next. good, very good, because instantly I think of yin is receptive, Yang is assertive. You know, there's so many ways that we describe and translate energetic terms, depending on cultures and just depending on thought to expand them and to also focus it. So really, um, whether it's Kabbalah, there's, I mean, it won't go into all these possible thought definitions, but this is so important because how we feel, back to what Susie, you know, kind of tying in both of these thoughts is so important. They say that manifestation, you know, that law of attraction that was so current, what, within the last 10 years, you know, kind of swept the wave across uh, the popular consciousness is that it's not just a thought, it's how we feel, how we yeah. feel. So it's what we're receiving. Absolutely. Yeah, it comes from the unconscious, you know, and, and that's that's why, you know, it, it's like often I get pushback when I, you know, I post a lot of, you know, positive memes and things and, and I get pushback on something like that's victim blaming or that's, you know, this mm -hmm. or that, you know, and it, it has nothing, it's not that at all. It's just, there's a deeper understanding of it that a lot of people don't have. And it's, it's actually, you know, when I realized that I was not, um, that I, you know, this, it's it's not about blaming somebody because they attracted something they didn't want. It's not a blame thing. It's right. understanding 
why that happened. And that's where the power comes is when you really understand it's extremely empowering, but you just, you know, you just have to kind of understand the entirety of it, that it, it's, it's an unconscious motivation, I guess you might want to say, I don't know what the word would be. Unconscious is good because awareness is through it all. Yes. Amanda. well, I just think that's such an important thing to bring up because I do, I see that a lot too. And it's, it's easy to fall into feeling like, oh, it's my fault because I attracted this. But really, yeah, it's, it's just all about, I mean, we're all doing it to some degree. Nobody's any better or worse at this. It's just a matter of taking ownership of that you are co-creating with the universe. Yeah. And that's exciting. It's so exciting when you can like (laughs) really get into that. Yeah. And then you can really guide your life with much more ease. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, know, go ahead. Well, I was thinking myself all these archetypal thoughts because yes, the Piscean energy is the last sign. Neptune is the last planet course there is Pluto which of course we revere and Pluto just to diverse uh, diverge a little bit here is in my own thinking now because it's been classified a dwarf planet but it actually has a tremendous transformational uh, connection with all the other dwarf planets Alan Clay is among other astrologers teaching about these energies so it's really as though Pluto in its reclassification in some ways has just attached, been attached to even greater transformational powers because they delineate how and expand that whole energy. So going back to Neptune, in one ways, Neptune is to the last or towards the end of the um, um, solar system. And we, we look at, okay, I mean, it, I'm trying to thread myself back into this because I could go with all these details, but really how planets, their characteristics and where they are in some ways, not just some ways, but very literally gets involved with how we understand the force, the involvement of their energy. So that's why I'm going into that whole thought pattern because when I'm going back to the archetypal thoughts that I'm hearing, okay, the Neptune Piscean is out of our control, incorporating the whole womb of existence. But inside of that existence, of course, is Saturn taking ownership. And again, we can become, uh, I think Saturn is one of the planets that can, even without being in Virgo, which mine happens to be in, <laughs> it, I think it, it can tend to say not enough. So this is really important to bring up that um, it's not one's error. It's just an unconsciousness that needs awareness to tie all this in together, if I am. And yeah. that taking ownership, one then therefore has ability to kind of peekaboo inside of themselves and go like, oh, hey, I was unaware of, I felt like that, you know? Yeah. And And when you, when you're able to take ownership or in Saturn's words, like be your own authority, then you get to direct things instead of it happening to you and you not directing your life. So that's the, (laughs) yeah, that's the, I mean, people, people give Saturn a bad rap, but you know, it's like really just about taking charge of your life. Well, it is, except we got to go back. Yes, that's good. And then I'll let go of this. But the fact is we're in Pisces right now. And really, it is that, I think, very similar to the alcoholic thing of uh, their adage that says, know what you can control, know what you can't, know the difference. Because yeah. not everything, sometimes yeah. taking control is surrendering or just allowing. Absolutely. Ex- yeah. Accepting. So, yeah. Can I read something out of this book? I found this thing. This is so relevant right now. So I I had this fantastic little, it's this tiny little book about Neptune that is so good. Um, But there's this little piece in here that just jumped out at me today. And I thought this would be perfect to to share. It says, um, the effects of Neptune can be very maligned by our Western society when it 
comes to Neptune's effects, we're still like the primitive child who fears the dark. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, you know, we've been taught that daydreaming is a waste of time. Hearing voices and seeing visions is insanity. It's only your imagination. Dreams are only dreams. Logic is superior to intuition. That's a great Saturn, Neptune kind of, you know, dilemma going back and forth. Yeah. You know, and it says, fortunately for us, the world's greatest composers, musicians, scientists, artists, and inventors didn't pay too close attention to these admonitions. And, you know, the, the dream is this. I know. I just, I love that. Oh, there's so much. And the I author, the author again. <laughs> the author people. is um, Patricia Morimondo. This is an old, an older book. I love the older astrology. Abe, A B E has a lot of old books. Yes, it yeah. is really. Um, but that's where creativity. I know in our pre-chat, mm -hmm. we always have a pre-chat that the yeah. creativity. Mm -hmm. And I think Amanda, you had that was one. Oh of well, the, yeah. Well, I, one of the things I. Like it's so great that we're talking about this now because it of because Venus is in Pisces and it's exalted in Pisces. It's in a very strong placement, and so there is um, more space for us to really tune into that: the compassion, the love, the creativity, the artistry, the imagine imagination, receptivity, all of that. Um, that's available to us now and yesterday even Venus just conjuncted Neptune um, so it's even more yeah. even more Piscean right now and even more of that ability to really tap into um, the unknown and what what is available to us um, through source through sources energy and like you said you know the, the yin follows yang you know and so the, it this is that that intense yin or not intense is not a word is that that you know ethereal yin period right and what's coming is the yang and it's like we you know if we just stay in this there imagine the possibilities of all of the things that we can create going forward things that we never dreamed possible you know in our own lives i mean it's just you know, this is, we're in an amazing, amazing period of time right now. And it's easy to take that for granted because we've been sort of beat up over this last year or so. And, um, and you know, there's there's been a lot of giving, wanting to give up or feeling like you're struggling against the, the tides, you know, but, um, but this really is a, a, a brilliant period of time to be, um, looking forward to things that, that you can't even imagine you know it's i always say like you wow. know don't don't get too married to the idea of what you can create because mm -hmm. you're gonna you're probably gonna undersell yourself you know you're probably gonna short yourself you know because the, the greater things can happen you know every time i set intentions i always end them with all this or something better you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yes and and really remembering how to feel about it because i know that with manifestation class I took one with dougal fraser and it was like okay you go through a process where you dream huge and then you come up with how that feeling was to choose a small step because you're right that's part of this process that we're transiting between we knew what the known it looked like how it felt how it operated but the unknown ahead of us is like we it's it's challenging on a personal basis to just drop the idea that I'm trying to put a form to it. It's like so going back to that energy of of how you feel. And I'm taking that brings me with one other thought about creativity. There's a, a little artistic um, art group that's once a week and I tune into it once in a while. And the assignment was, one of them was to take 10 minutes a day and just stack your happiness onto all your memories from past and then project to the future, which I found really challenging, but so revealing for our conversation that we're having today about imagining the, the impossibilities. Because I realized that, yes, I could remember favorite things, whether it was a meal or a visit or a um, event, you know, however it goes in your mind and heart. But then I realized that a lot of times I would say, oh, not possible, can't do in the future. But when I started mm -hmm. to broaden that out, 
I would start to translate into what still was possible. And then it started to become on a daily basis where I would start to cue into what if like I had a candle lit and instead of just a candle, lit, I went, Oh, that makes me feel so good. You know, mm, it, it, so yeah. that kind of, remembering the feelings. Yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. The creative, yeah. a process, a process. Well, and Pisces is such a feeling sign, you know, it's just so it, it feels everything. And, and, you know, there's Susie, you were talking about how it's been challenging. Um, it was, a, it was a very challenging last year. I mean, no one's going to dispute that and still challenging for some. And there could be a, um, a sense of wanting to jump ahead and skip ahead to the good stuff. Yeah. But it's so important to really just take this time. Like the, the Pisces energy is kind of like being in a balsamic phase where it's the end of the cycle. And so it's a dying away of the old and withdrawing inward and, um, Kind of like wrapping up the old and preparing for the new and there can be there can be a low energy or a sense of kind of wanting to cocoon so just like be in it and allow yourself to rest and just to be and um kind of shore yourself up because that has been a challenging year and it's been um it's been draining in a lot of ways and so this is our time to really just um rest and and get ready for the the new fun energies coming yeah you know it's like we spent so much time last year getting to the meat of who we really are you know as people and um one of the things you know because because that's that was difficult um one of the things that we that a lot of people neglected to realize was how much, well, I don't want to say a lot of people neglected, but um, many didn't realize how much that, um, how much more sensitive they became. Mm -hmm. You know, we were so isolated. We, we didn't realize that our, our, our heightened sensitivity, our, our, our sensitivities were getting heightened. We were following the moon cycles more closely because all of the, the stuff was stripped away from us, you know, and all of the distractions were stripped away. Mm. And so when we, when we become more sensitive, we become more sensitive. And so, you know, um, other than the, the, you know, the obvious challenge that we had with, with COVID, um, you know, people are feeling like there's a lot of folks that are experiencing like that drain in energy. When you when you become more sensitive, you become more sensitive to your environment, to the foods you eat, to the you know the everything around you. You know, the sheets you're sleeping on, the the chair you're mm -hmm. sitting in. You know, it's and so um, paying attention to that now is Ooh. really important because. You know, we need to know how. You know, we're 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 navigating into this different space, and our energy has shifted. And so, how we, you know, it, it's 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 not just about getting out and being around other people and figuring out like personal boundaries again. You know, it's it really is. It's it's like we're not gonna we're not showing up as the same we're, we're really not and, and I get that we I all like evolve that. I mean mm -hmm. every human is evolving every day of you know their entire existence but this was like a concentrated shutdown deal with your crap and then come on out and see what you got and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know oh wow right what a reset <laughs> button. I think we're yeah, all totally. just reflecting that in part of, 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 of sensing that truth. It is so <laughs> true because the moment one understands that's where the past and present convene, right? Or past and future, right? For the moment. But you're absolutely right because I've often thought of ancients who with their mythology and looked at the stars and saw so much and the lack of distraction, but it was more a headspace. How often can we get into that space? But here we are. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, and with all of the, um, we had that big shift from going from all that Capricorn energy into Aquarius, which 
definitely lighten things up, but it also is that we've talked about this before. It's that, that energy of trauma. And so we're still like, we've been in like such a holding pattern of just getting through this pandemic. And now there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And so we can kind of release a little bit of that, um, that trauma that we all kind of went through. So extra important to just, you know, be gentle with yourself right now and have this, compassion with yourself. Good point. And as we wrap this up, because we have in a minute a little break, but I'm realizing the thread the two of you are bringing together that if we are in the moment, an extended moment of consistency, you know, looking at what is rather than distracted with all these energetics of to do, to do in the future, because you got to go somewhere in the transportation, just immediate time. And that there's a shock, because I think of trauma, I've really always think of this Aquarian shock factor of too sudden of changes. Yeah. Well, the sudden change was like getting connected to oneself, one's authenticity. And that can be somewhat of a trauma when you see the disconnect between what you're authentic and what you're living. So it's all this beautiful blend that is like uh, this uh, percolating soup that sometimes it's like, do we remake the pot with less spices or do we just add more spices and <laughs> make it more edible? I don't know. <laughs> I want to we'll get more back. spicy. <laughs> All right, Cayenne. All right, well, this has been wonderful. It's Cosmic Collaboration Panel with Amanda Pierce, myself, Sue Rose Minahan, and Susie Kerr Wright. So we'll be back. This is the 13th, 14th, Sunday. Yes. <laughs> While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the yin period of Pisces, ruled modernly by Neptune and by Jupiter in traditional astrology of the ancients. By leaving a cycle based on the equality of all humans and brilliancy, Pisces concludes the 12 signs to energetically encompass the entirety of the universe where humans have no control. As a mutable water sign, represented by two fish swimming in opposite directions of the forces of life, we experience in Pisces the collective unconscious energy of the unknown. Intuitive, psychic Pisces completes the seed cycle, initiated with Aries' willful separation from the Piscean womb. Talk Cosmos brings you leading-edge astrological conversations with hour-long programs each week on KKNW. The show goes live every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on Facebook and YouTube, along with daily chats throughout the week on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure you click like and subscribe buttons so you can get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or, if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. So, grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha, and enjoy the show. Ciao and greetings to all you folks out there that have got enough curiosity to tune in to what's going on here. My name is Jeff Peters. I am the Lively Astrologer, and you're listening to Talk Cosmos on Alternative Talk 1150 AM where we unveil astrology's ancient archetypes that continually build the collective experiences in our consciousness. Alternative Talk 1150, online at 1150kknw.com. Hi again. Well, we are continuing on this quest of transcending from the known to the unknown, or the unknown to the known, I, it's really, we're transcending. And I'm with um, the members of Cosmic Collaboration for Pisces, and that is Amanda Pierce in from the West Coast of, in Seattle. I am happen to be Sue Rose Minahan in Hawaii on the Big Island. And Susie Kara Wright is in Tennessee, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Boy, I'm mixing everything up. Anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're right so with the we, time, Sue. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Yes, yeah, recentering. Well, we had some questions that we were thinking about earlier, and perhaps now is a good time as we're learning this authenticity with ourselves that we mentioned about living in the moment, the now, which perhaps forced because our distractions, as Susie was um, reiterating, was are like uh, um, no longer separating us from what is in our life. So what contracts does our soul have? If we go into this Piscean concept that of us as a spirit incarnated, because Pisces does connect with the spirit, the mystic, the spirituality of life, and it is the um, music, you know, is, is famously involved, you know, it transcends and, and the metaphors and, and this, but uh, what isn't working with our relationships? What are the soul contracts? If that spurs some thoughts as we, uh, with this, and to recap, we have Venus in Pisces, uh, Mars has just entered. So, so it's, it's a very um, compassionate, receptive time that we're experiencing. Well, As, yeah, Mars is um, Mars in evolutionary astrology is considered the leading edge of the soul's evolution. So it's the conscious driver of Pluto and the unconscious soul. Uh, so it's instinctively acting upon uh, um, the desires emanating from the soul. So I don't know how that necessarily relates to karmic contracts, but I assume that there it could potentially be working with that. Um, but what I really like about Mars is now that it has gone into Gemini, it's um, it's really lightening up some of that energy and allowing for for us to be more fluid mentally. Like it's been in Taurus which has been Taurus so great at holding its ground. But, you know, and sometimes in that holding, we were not able to take in new information. And so Gemini is allowing for that. And, uh, and tomorrow, actually, it will be ruled by Mercury and Pisces. So it's, it's again, kind of going back to that Pisces energy and that fluidity and, and back to that principle of yang follows yin. So we're in this time of, of stepping deeper into our yin and, and being more in stillness and dreaming more and imagining more. And then the more we're able to do that on, in a yin way with the Venus energies, the more Mars will be able to kind of guide us to seeing connections that um that will help us move forward and help our, help our soul move forward interesting you, you say it so well <laughs> oh oh uh, that's uh, yes uh, my sweetheart um yes, go ahead yeah one of the things it was a couple of things that jumped out i'm, I'm not trying to quite make the connection but i have some ideas um you know i was i was noticing something i i you know i'm very intuitive with the astrology work i do so i, I it just i kind of just like look at a chart and i'll be like just talk to me just show me you know what what's here and i keyed in on chiron at eight degrees of aries and i kind of got stuck on well what's the sabian symbol for that right now oh. and it's a crystal gazer and I thought, wow, you know, because Sue, and, and, it, and it hit me because Sue, you were talking about the reconciling the past and moving into the present and like kind of bringing all that together. I was like, wow, you know, we're coming into this time or in this time where we kind of get, we, we're getting glimpses of our future. We're getting them. We're getting them. We just may not know that we're getting them. You know, they're not really obscured because nothing's ever really hidden from us. There's always signs and arrows and things pointing, you know, saying it's here, it's here, it's 
it's here, whether it's something we have to work on or, or whatever it is, you know, there's like big flashing signs and we just go, no, no, but it's not hidden from us. So, so yeah. I feel like we have, you know, in this dreaming and imagining and, and allowing ourselves to be those creative people, the, the creative people that, you know, the creative humans that we're meant to be more or that, you know, we've lost touch with over the years of believed was wrong or whatever, you know, um, this, you know, this is a chance for us to all be kind of like the, the fortune tellers for our own lives, you know, um, and, and the other piece that kind of stuck out for me, and it all really kind of comes back to Mars too, because, you know, obviously it's Chiron and Aries, we'll buy Mars and then, but another thing that, um, that struck me was being like Neptune being in its last decade now, um, uh, which mm. is Scorpio. And, oh yeah think think of the destruction you know <laughs> yeah. purging purging yeah transformation yeah. and Perfect. really going deeper within yeah. too yeah yes that's right and and to be the architect of your life and to be the you know the it, you know like, like you were saying earlier Amanda, you know law of attraction it's always working whether you believe in it or not you know you're always creating and yeah. so um and so this is you know this is really it's such a profound time on so many levels, you know, and, all, and nothing is happening by itself. It's all, it's all connected and we're all connected. And, you know, it's, it's, um, and, and I feel like a, a lot of what we're seeing out there in the world, that, that division and that, you know, it is, um, it, it, you know, with Pisces, one of the things in, in that 12th house stuff and Neptune and all of that is it's where we learn to merge with others without losing our own identity, ideally, right? Mm -hmm. But what what happens a lot, we merge too much. We lose our sense of self when we're in relationships in, in those kind of, you know, those types of relationships. And so and then, then, you know, there's different options that we have. We can surrender to it. Um, we can, you know, we can work on changing it or we can completely rebel against it and, you know, put up walls and barriers and boundaries that are not really, that, that are not healthy, you know? And so, um, and you'd be more able to speak on, on this, Amanda, um, with, you know, being, uh, having a degree in psychology, I love it. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I mean, it's you know what, what we're seeing is the outer manifestation of people's reaction to meeting themselves is what I. What, that's kind of my summary of all of this. Yeah, well, I I love that you brought up the Sabian symbol for Chiron. I didn't know that. Uh, what I did find was that there will be a Sun Venus Chiron conjunction happening March twenty seventh, twenty eighth. And so I believe that's going to be at about eight degrees. So this could be after all of this Pisces energy that we're moving through, when the Sun and Venus uh, finally move into Aries, uh, they're going to join Chiron, and there can be a piece of healing that and and finding our ourselves in a greater way, more. Um, kind of who we more instinctually are potentially in that Aries energy. What I like is that this yep, breathe, seven. you could say faith because it is part of the Piscean energy is to have faith. And it's a, you know, the intellect can, you know, the North Node is in Gemini it, on any means it can kind of block that because it wants a linear, Gemini seeks the spirit and and the the connection between spirit and matter, the twins, just a mythology. One dies, one's mortal, one's immortal. It, that's the whole theme. But yet it still, I think, has this um, linear path a little bit. It's like, so it, it can block that idea of faith. And you don't, and it's such a, the blind faith versus the, experiment how do you say the word experimental experiential ex, ex, exponential you know, exponential or ex, in other words it's experiencing it all the time thank oh you. experiential <laughs> yes experiential. Experiential. <laughs> thank you language and sue so <laughs> yeah um because faith what you're saying is to have the faith that we are becoming that, to see, well, you see the signs. That's absolutely right. If we're 
sensitive to it, we can notice how these changes are happening and to have faith of um, uh, yeah. going forward. Well, well, and Venus is the esoteric ruler of Pisces. So Venus rules three signs. It rules Taurus, which is about your relationship with yourself. It rules Libra, which is about your relationship with others. And it rules Pisces, which is about your relationship with source or the great beyond, whatever you want to call it. And so mm. with Venus in Pisces, it's about partnering with that energy and, and mm. kind of allowing source to take the lead in that partnership, which is all about that trust and that faith and, um, uh, and allowing yourself to kind of surrender to it. So oh, I think I that, that. that fits in what you're saying. I mean, that just sounds like such a beautiful way forward. You know, it, it's just like, that's, it's that's such a it. good foundation, right? For, yeah. for where we're moving towards with the, the rebirth in spring. So going back, it, all of this is magnificently um, fo is expressed. And I'm realizing like, okay, what are we completing? That was one of the questions that stood out in the sense of on a soul for our soul. And we can understand more the contracts that we have. And maybe if we don't know what the future entails, that's a big maybe because of course we don't, in some ways, if we're really co working with future, there's going to introduce ideas that we're uh, um, navigating. To, to, to in, you know, introduce into our worlds. But the point, getting back to completing and soul contracts, you know, that whole energy of uh, yeah. Well, yeah, this these? is this is that Piscean energy of the balsamic phase where we're completing things and we're we're wrapping things up so that we can um, step forward into the Aries energy with um, with less baggage, really to, to hold us back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, that sat, that sun Venus Chiron conjunction that can be, um, a real healing, um, energy in terms of that rebirth. And, you know, sometimes that can be painful, but it can be more of like a homeopathic release. It's necessary. Sometimes we got to feel the pain to allow it to, to release from us. Um, in order to move forward. And, you know, going back to, I suddenly realized eight degrees, because you were mentioning about Chiron and this healing energy that's uh, that's uh, connected with the sun and Venus around the 27th, 28th of March, a yeah. couple of weeks from now. And the fact that it is eight degrees, it's in a cardinal sign. So anybody that has early degrees of cardinal signs, that would be Libra, Capricorn, and uh, um, um Cardinal, help me here. Uh, uh, oh, cancer. Uh, yeah, cancer. Of That's course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That very <laughs> personal one, right? Yes. Um, are going to be especially uh, motivated in either through, well, if it, depending on the aspect, um, whether it's opposition of awareness, you know, which would be with Libra of, of their partnerships, how the self is. Because Chiron in Aries is all about identity. You know, the United States has our Chiron at 20 degrees, which we're slowly progressing because it's a long orbit. It's very elliptical orbit. And so it's a long time in Aries where it's a very short time in Libra. So it's, it won't um, perfect, as we say, as a conjunction for several years. But it's that, is it okay to be me? Is it okay to have my own identity? And the United States really, on um, one basis, is how they came into this, country forming the nation was they each wanted to on some terms live the life that they thought was okay but it's always that struggle in a way which yeah. is a peculiar thing in one way but maybe the glory of it so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and kind of defining what the what your identity is um and 
yeah, go ahead, Susie. No, I was gonna say it's it's actually I just I just ran it through solar fire. It's a, it's the twenty eighth is when it's gonna be exact. All three of them at okay. eight degrees Aries with oh, the wow. crystal gazer mm -hmm. Sabian symbol. That is so cool. I and, love that imagery. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and it really is, I mean, like you were saying, so you know, it's it's about um you know, one of the things he like one of the things that people that um well, I don't want to keep generalizing, but it, it's about overcompensating. Where have we been overcompensating as humans? And 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 of course, you know, with with the the country um, being having that same placement, um, you know, healing from that need to overcompensate to overdo. You know, we are the country of over flipping doing it. I mean, we really are, you know, we rock, but we overdo everything. You know, I mean, what's the, you know, it's like, it's like nothing can just be, it has to be overdone by Americans. So, um, you know, maybe there's some healing around that that can happen for us, you know, individually and collectively, you know. Energetically, I'm realizing our ascendant is, if you go with a sibling chart at five, 10 p.m. Uh, just to, for our audience sake, July 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia, we have a 12 degree Sagittarius rising. That's my Jupiter. Rising. Yeah, yeah. That's my so rising. So really, it's like, um, <laughs> you know, beyond expanding to new horizons, which can be, and compensation, we can be overcoming. So, you know, really that fire to fire, that trine energy might help support that healing process. Plus it's sextile. That's a connective for people, a 60 degree um, energy to our natal Mars. I think our natal Mars is in Gemini, early Gemini. It's like, um, is it eight, eight Gemini? It might be eight I can or six. look it up here. Hang on. Yeah, it might be six Gemini. Yeah. But I'm so in tune with this USA chart for a number of reasons. Um, but one of them is that uh, we're getting our Pluto return next year. And so everything happening is such a integral part about, you know, going back to Pluto, this, that we're in the last de decan, you said, because and decan for our audience is like, if you take well, 30 degrees, they're the first 10, the second 10, the third 10. And depending on what sign the planet's in. So it, at any, at any rate, it's in Scorpio. That's the last of the water signs. So we're that's Pluto ruled, and you could say co-ruler with Mars. Well, I say could say because well, evolution yeah. astrology. Yes, go ahead. I mean, we've First been uh, we've been seeing it all all of that shadow material coming forward for the U.S. with the Pluto return coming up, and so there is a need for us to really um look at our identity who who are we as a nation and what do we want to be and is this do we want to kind of um redefine that and and rebirth that really now going back unless somebody has something real quick i'm realizing because every time i see you susie i think to myself i mean okay the eclipse in 2017, you know, and it, it's an interesting, this is not a, an eclipse conversation, yet it is a transformational uh, event. And it is interesting to think of the longevity of an eclipse. It went right over Nashville. So, uh, and of course, Amanda, you and I happened to see that together. I mean, we we're in the same area. We saw it at the moment independently, but we were connected. So, Oh my goodness. Well, I and think Susie got to see that too, I given did. that she was. I that did. Show. It was so amazing. <laughs> right oh at home. God. Loved yeah. it. Loved you didn't it. have cool. to go anywhere. Like we nope. traveled to Idaho. Yeah. yeah, we had to go somewhere. So Yep, right from my backyard. So going awesome. back, maybe that's another key here just to look at like what signs you know, because everything is immediate. Everything does give a signature of the moment if we can just look at it in a, in a, well, I want to say positive, but in a constructive, in a, in the truthful manner. So a crystal ball at this moment here, like Susie for that, just talking about that relationship of awareness was right at home. Whereas for Amanda and me, we had to go 
at a distance in order to, to find it. So here we are now all in our own spaces, looking at potentially our crystal ball ahead of us. I mean, it's an orb of, of how to act in, because Aries is a separation. I mean, we're in this womb now, but we're moving towards some future um, development of something that will become known. <laughs> And um, something's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we may as well go back. Now is a time. Thank you. Now is a time to return to the yin. Okay. Yeah. Because we do have to draw this <laughs> conversation in a collective manner. And it, it with all this mutable energy, it is easy to, even though we're not physically going somewhere in our headspace, to get overreach. Going back to that. Yeah, you know, Mars and Gemini, um, especially ruled by Mercury in Pisces, can be a little distracted, a little bit, um, a little hard to kind of pin down. So just flow with it. That's that's what I would say. Allow yourself it's, to like it's gathering. Yeah, it's gathering yeah, all the dewdrops. Gathering information. To make, at this like point. I might say, what comes to my mind: gathering the dewdrops to make a new sarong. Of, of of colors and descriptions of what you see. I mean, that's I, very uh, visually creative perhaps, but in a sense, like, how are you gonna wear that? What does the moment want to bring? Yeah, and yeah. I like how Susie mentioned um, daydreaming, how that's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If your mind is wandering right now, kind of allow it to a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, again, it's like we've, we've been on this, on this thing this thing this is wild ride and you know when you when you <laughs> i've been I've, I've been really like i'm thinking of all these like carnival rides and things I, I i belong to these groups of like uh amusement parks and things i used to go to when i was a kid <laughs> and there, was, there was one um that i was thinking of it was, it was called the whip and <laughs> you, oh boy you know you it went around and the car was on an arm and it would pivot really fast every time it would come around the turn <laughs> it's like you know we've been on this oh, whip yeah. and and so you know this, this kind of mind numbing one thing after another and so yeah so i mean it really is like proceeding forward you know we have i, I guess what i would say to to kind of sum up my thoughts on it is we have all the tools we need now to to move forward in our lives we have every we always have but we we've never been more awake and aware mm. as humans you know we use the i mean the term woke is thrown around and it has you know it, it well it has negative connotations or whatever but but if you think about just the terminology that gets thrown around in, in our in our world you know there's always that astrological truth to it or that positive you know energy behind it and we are awake and mm. um and so you know, we don't, we're not, we don't have to walk through life blindly anymore, at least I, I, the vast majority of us. And so, um, so, you know, if we just keep remembering that we came here for it with that soul contract of like, we're here to do something, we are here to, and it's not about going out and doing something like, you know, finding this right job that may be part of it or this right relationship or whatever, but we're here to hold the space, I guess is a better way to put it, mm. for what our existence is, just us, we are enough. Ooh, just yes. as we are. Thank you. And, I, and if we can hold on to that as we get back out there in the world or just, you know, keep navigating through whatever is going to be thrown at us, you know, um, that's that's really where we can find the peace. Thank you. And this beautifully that. closes <laughs> our whole talk. We have just because today actually closes the third season of Talk Cosmos that started in 2018 Aww. in Aries. And nice. next week will be the igniting Aries in our fourth season. And for that talk, we'll be discussing the Venus star point that will be in Aries. It'll be the second to the last one over its hundredth year uh, 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 cycle. And coming in for that conversation will be Jeff Gronlund and Ray Sapp and Petra Tauscher. They've all been on the show before. Uh, 
and it, it'll be very exciting as we continue into this new world of for top cosmos and that keeps shifting and changing here we are on on uh, youtube but this idea of holding space awareness awakeness we're awake oh thank you from yang to yin inside yes catalyst the gazer just a little bullet thoughts thank you susie thank you amanda thank, thank you both. guys thank you both Thank you for joining us on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests connect soul growth patterns with the energetic cycles of astrology. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.